guys we are dealing with a YCY 042 three and a half ton gas pack and um, it's about 65 degrees outside the standing pressures are 120 and 120 we're gonna fire it up and see how it runs Normally I would not be alarmed if I saw pressures like this and performance, but several days before I had been out to this call and found the system performing in such a way that uh, it prompted a leak search and 67 degrees of superheat is definitely not a good thing. I ended up coating the coil in soap bubbles and pushing the pressure up to about 400 psi to be able to find the leak. If you noticed the data plate says that the system holds nine pounds four ounces and this is all that we were able to recover out of the system. As if I needed more proof when I recovered the unit it pulled down to about negative three psi and after standing for a little while, the pressure went to zero. There are a lot of guys that prefer to cut their fittings rather than braise them loose. I don't know why, but I prefer to sweat out the fittings rather than cut them out and have to put in couplings or whatever. It just seems to me that if you don't have as many joints in your copper, you've got a better chance of minimizing potential leaks down the road. Most of you guys know that when I do my brazing work, I purge nitrogen constantly so as to keep everything clean and this is no different from any other time. We are purging nitrogen the entire time that we've got torches on copper. So we get our fittings dry fitted and they don't slide all the way in but when we apply heat to the copper the solder softens up and allows us to seat the fittings in fully. A lot of times you actually wouldn't have to use any more solder just as in this case we were able to get it to hold very well without adding any more solder to the fitting.
I have seen some repairs that have been done where the filter dryer is applied on the liquid line over the heat exchanger compartment or the heat strip compartment of a heat pump. I decided that this place works best for me in most situations. I'm not a huge fan of having the filter dryer up under the rest of the housing and over the heat exchanger. It sort of stinks to have to put it in a vertical location, but I've become fairly proficient with vertical solder joints and this keeps the filter dryer in a typical location where it is protected under the fan shroud but not in the heat exchanger compartment. All brazed up and ready for pressure test. The first time that I saw a high head on a pressure test where the suction line didn't come up with it, I freaked out a little bit, but obviously the TXV closes down at one point during the pressure test and holds the pressure back. So we add some pressure over on the suction line, equalize it, and we're holding pretty steady at 331 had the vacuum running for about an hour now. We're going to go ahead and confirm our micron reading. We're holding with the pump valve off at about 250 psi. 250 microns, excuse me. We're going to turn it up, run the pump a little bit longer, and we should be about ready to start adding refrigerant. We got our clamps on the liquid and suction line so we can get our superheat and subcool. Have the wires for the clamps routed up through under the coil, over the coil, and under the top of the unit. And we will go ahead and add nine pounds, four ounces of R22 refrigerant. All right, so we got refrigerant in. We will go ahead and start it up. And I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'd say these pressures look a heck of a lot better than they did before. We'll see you on the next one. You should have called me to help you. I'd have been glad to. Oh, it ain't my first barbecue.